My name's Adam, and this is RTFM, where I read the f***ing manual so you don't have to. Let's get started. This video is about Solid State Logic's The Bus Plus, which is a relatively new piece of hardware that came out earlier this year, 2022. This is the quick start guide, but I'll be reading the longer manual in a few minutes. It's a lot of buttons, a lot of knobs. What do they all do? Thank you for purchasing the Bus Plus. You're welcome. The Bus Plus takes the classic SSL bus compressor and enriches it with an abundance of new sonic options, control, and flexibility to match the needs of today's mixing and mastering engineers. If that wasn't enough, the Bus Plus also features a completely new and powerful two-band dynamic EQ, making it an incredibly versatile analog processor. To download the in-depth user guide, head to the SSL website. Low HD, FB, and 4K mode. Three different sonic options for shaping the overall sound of the compressor. Low THD provides a cleaner bottom end. FB offers a more relaxed style of compression, and 4K mode adds character and variable harmonic content. Variable sidechain, high pass filter, controls the amount of low end triggering the sidechain with the variable SC HPF. They split the page on this one, so I'm gonna just scroll down. More ratio options. Expanding on the classic ratio settings are new options perfect for mastering. 1.3 to 1, 1 1.5 to 1, and creative effects. Negative 2.5, 1.5, and 0.5. As well as all the classic mix bus ratios. Mix. Easily dial in parallel compression. Attack and release. Hone the time constants. More attack and release options than ever before. Try 0.5 release on drums or auto 2 on a mix. Mode. Choose the mode of operation for the compressor. Classic stereo. I think that's delta side chain stereo. Dual mono or mid side. The meter displays gain reduction for the bus compressor or frequency range settings when configuring the DEQ. Post DEQ. The bus compressor can be positioned before or after the DEQ for processing order flexibility. Makeup gain. Push and hold to switch the makeup control between coarse and fine steps. DEQ. Two band dynamic EQ with low frequency and high frequency bands. Push the knob to engage and then turn left to start compressing or right to start expanding. Tri-color LEDs provide feedback on the amount of processing being applied. Push and hold the knob and then use the plus or minus buttons in the center of the unit to adjust the frequency and range settings for that band. HF fast and LF fast buttons provide different sidechain attack or release settings or press and hold for auto modes. HF Bell allows the high frequency band to switch from a shelf to a bell filter. LF HF Gain, a makeup gain for the low frequency band of the DEQ. Push the knob to add the classic G series overshoot undershoot resonance around the frequency point. Green indicator on. If the unit is in a stereo mode, this knob becomes high frequency gain. G HF indicator will now be red. External sidechain. Trigger the sidechain for the bus compressor and or DEQ externally. Okay, that's it for the quick guide. Now let's go to the full user guide. And I'm not going to read every single page because a lot of this has like copyright notices and things like that. I'm going to go to the meat of the document. I'm reading revision 1.1, which was published in April 2022. Here's the table of contents. Ooh, unlocked transient expander feature. 
Page four, introduction, overview, the bus compressor legacy. If there is a single piece of analog processing equipment that is synonymous with SSL, it just has to be the SSL bus compressor. From the very first commercially released SSL 4000B console in 1979, and through many generations of SSL consoles that have followed since, the bus compressor has always been the stalwart of the console center section. In 1991, when SSL took its first steps into the analog outboard world, the FXG384 saw the bus compressor put into rack mount form, meaning that studios without SSL consoles could use it. In 2002, the FXG384 received a facelift, with a new silver front panel taking it into the X-Logic era, and this was followed by the multi-channel 5.1 version the following year. In 2007, the bus compressor became available as a double width module for the X-Rack series, and in 2013, the bus compressor made its way into the ever popular 500 series format. Even if you've never had a chance to experience the SSL bus compressor in real life, then you will have undoubtedly come across it in plug-in form, perhaps by using the SSL native bus compressor too. One thing is for sure, throughout the course of music production history, the bus compressor has always been the de facto choice for gluing a mix together. Creating the ultimate. For the past two and a half years, we've been hard at work engineering the bus plus on a mission to create the ultimate and most versatile incarnation of the bus compressor ever seen. The bedrock of the design remains faithful, as it always has done, to the original circuit, and using this base as the starting point, we've built upon it, adding a number of unique coloration options. If you need it to be clean and punchy, like the X-Logic version, it can be. If you need it to be gritty and grungy like an early 4K, it can do that also. Or if you need it to do something a little different, we've got you covered. To complement the new feature set, we also sought to bring improvements that would benefit recallability and technical performance. Firstly, this led to a decision to make all of the pots on the Bus Plus stepped. Every pot is either in 11 or 31 position stepped control, and this has the obvious advantage of making recalls easier. But there's actually more cleverness going on here. Stepped pots on their own may make recalls easier, but simply using them instead of continuous pots doesn't lead to any technical advantage per se, as they are still subject to mechanical tolerances that can compromise stereo matching and the overall analog performance. So we went even further, coming up with an innovative approach to the implementation. On the Bus Plus, all the stepped pot positions are read by an onboard microcontroller, meaning that no audio actually passes through the pots themselves, and by doing this, we are no longer subject to the pot tolerances. The microcontroller's job is to translate the pot positions into the required circuit configuration or electrical parameter. To be clear, the Bus Plus is a 100% analog circuit design. It's just managed in a clever way. This approach is extended to the front panel buttons, providing clean and reliable switching of analog signals. This approach is extended to the front panel buttons, providing clean and reliable switching of analog signals thanks to the use of electronic switches. In conjunction with the technical and general feature improvements, the Bus Plus incorporates an all new dynamic analog equalizer section, which we've named the DEQ. The DEQ is a powerful two band dynamic equalizer that can be placed before or after the bus compressor. Many engineers are familiar with dynamic EQ plugins inside the DAW, but analog dynamic EQs are few and far between. A dynamic EQ is a more intelligent form of EQ that changes the gain of an EQ band proportionally in response to the signal level once above a set threshold. 
It allows you to modify the contrast between background material, under threshold, and forward material, above threshold. The DEQ is built upon a specially adapted version of the bus compressor sidechain circuit, which contributes significantly to its powerful yet musical sonic character. Being able to use the DEQ in conjunction with the bus compressor makes for some very exciting dynamic and tonal options indeed. To round off the design, we decided to give the Bus Plus four unique operating modes alongside the known and loved classic stereo mode. A SC stereo mode is available as found in our duality console. Midside allows you to tailor the final mix or master stereo image and dual mono is super useful for tracking purposes or creative stem use. The Bus Plus is truly a treasure chest of compression options at your disposal. Page 8 Tutorial Mode Selection The Bus Plus has four different modes of operation to choose from. Pressing the mode switch will move you through the options. Make sure you're wearing a blue glove when operating the SSL Bus Plus. Okay, I just made that part up. Classic Stereo. This is the classic mode of operation for the SSL bus compressor. Designed to be used on stereo sources, the controls on the left hand side of the unit determine the settings of both left and right channels. The right hand controls are disabled and have no function associated to them in this mode, with the exception of the LP HF gain DEQ control. SC Stereo. In alternative stereo mode of operation, the controls on the left side of the unit determine the settings of both left and right channels. In this mode, the left and right side chain signals are summed together, as opposed to being individually rectified. The effect of this is that the bus compressor becomes more sensitive towards mono content in a stereo source, typically instruments like kick drum, snare, bass, have a go at switching between classic stereo and delta SC stereo to see which you prefer on the material you're compressing. A short press and hold on the mode switch allows you to go backwards through the modes, useful for A being between two adjacent options. HF gain is only accessible in classic stereo or sidechain stereo modes. Dual mono. This mode configures the bus compressor as two entirely independent mono processing engines. The controls on the left hand side determine the settings for channel 1 and the right hand side controls determine the settings for channel 2. Midside. The bus plus has built in midside encode decode circuitry that allows the left hand side of the unit to process the mid signal and the right side of the unit to process the side signal. This mode is a great tool for mastering engineers. CH1 in and CH2 in switches. These switches allow you to bypass all bus compressor and DEQ processing. In stereo modes, the CH2 switch is disabled as CH1 controls, both left and right channels. In stereo modes, the CH2 switch is disabled as CH1 controls both left and right channels. Page 9, Overload Clipping Indication. The CH1 in and CH2 in switches will indicate if the headroom of the unit has been exceeded by flashing red when the signal passing through the unit registers above 26.5 dBU, which is one decibel below absolute headroom of 27.5 dBU. Overload detection is done at the output of every internal circuit that has potential to introduce gain or to be overloaded, including the EXT SC in. If this happens, you may need to reduce the makeup gain or indeed the level coming into the bus plus. Mid solo and side solo. Mid side mode only. When the bus plus is in mid side mode, pressing and holding the CH1 in switch will allow you to solo the mid signal and pressing and holding the CH2 in switch will allow you to solo the side signal. The switch will flash yellow to indicate the solo. Press and hold the switch again to release the solo. 
There are two different ways to listen to the soloed side signal, depending on your preference. By default, the side signal is presented on both left and right outputs, in phase, when soloed. This can be changed in the settings menu to be presented after passing through the MS decoder, such as side signal out of phase on right output. Sleep mode. You can put the unit into sleep mode by pressing and holding both the CH1 in and CH2 switches together for two seconds or until they start flashing. Sleep mode puts the unit into a very low power state, less than one watt, shutting down the audio rails until the unit is woken from sleep. Simply press the mode switch to wake the bus plus from sleep. I think most people know what these controls are if you've ever used a compressor before. One standout are the negative ratios, which allow you to better control material that features extremely loud signals or use it for a creative pumping effect. The release setting sets the release time of the compressor in seconds. 11 position stepped pot ranging from 0.05 to 1.2 seconds plus two automatic release settings. For the first time on an SSL bus compressor, a fast release time of 50 milliseconds is offered as well as a 0.15 seconds option. Auto is the same automatic option as found on all other SSL bus compressors, suitable for complex material as the release circuitry has a two stage release, 10 milliseconds short, 12 seconds long. This means that louder elements of the signal are released quickly and quieter elements more slowly. Auto 2, 50 milliseconds short, 6 seconds long, is a new option providing a slightly more active automatic setting. A press and hold of the makeup control allows for the control to work in finer increments of 0.5 decibels with a range of minus 5 to plus 10 decibels. The green LED below fine lights to indicate this mode is active. Please note that the mix knob only applies to the bus compressor part of the bus plus 2. DEQ is unaffected by the mix control. Low THD. Most compressors by their nature start distorting low frequencies before high ones, particularly when set for fast release times. Sometimes this forms part of the desirable analog character, but other times it is counterproductive. Pressing the low THD switch on the bus plus introduces a special circuit modification in the sidechain, helping to limit the amount of low frequency distortion. Subjectively, low THD cleans up the bottom end, allowing you to achieve cleaner gain reduction than without it. Give it a try on your mix and see if you like it. Page 12, FB Feedback Mode. Although the bus compressor sidechain per se has a feedback topology, the signal feeding the sidechain is derived from a feed forward position. Engaging the FB switch derives the signal feeding the sidechain from a feedback position, meaning after the main gain reduction VCA in the audio path. This results in a more relaxed style of compression in contrast to the traditional grab of the bus compressor. 4K mode. When 4K mode is disabled, the main VCA operates in a balanced configuration optimized for low noise and distortion. This is the approach of all modern SSL super analog bus compressor designs found in duality and AWS consoles. Engaging 4K mode does two things. Firstly, it changes the operation of the VCA from balanced to unbalanced, matching how the bus compressor in a 4000 series console was implemented. And secondly, it introduces a variable amount of harmonic distortion via the VCA. These two factors combine to allow for a more colored sound. Adjusting the distortion amount, you'll find there's a certain sweet spot, depending on your mix level, in which your material will become more cohesive thanks to the added thickness. Since distortion is not achieved by means of overloading, 
there is no inherent noise penalty from using 4K mode, even at the highest distortion settings. 4K mode adjusting the distortion setting. There are nine levels of distortion to choose from. The current distortion setting is indicated by the color of the switch when 4K mode is engaged. The bus plus ships from the factory set to level five of nine. To alter the distortion setting, press and hold the 4K mode set dist switch until it starts flashing. Then use the minus and plus switches to decrease or increase distortion. Press and hold the 4K mode switch to finalize and return the minus and plus buttons to their standard functions, low THD and FB. If you look on screen, you can see which colors are aligned with which numbers. Red has the most distortion and white has the least amount. Selecting the external sidechain input. Pressing the SCHPF control allows the external sidechain inputs to be sourced for the bus compressor, DEQ, or both. Press once to select the external inputs as the source for the bus compressor sidechain. Press twice to select the external inputs as the source for the dynamic EQ sidechain. Press three times to select the external inputs as the source for both the bus compressor and the dynamic EQ sidechains. Press four times to return to the default state of internal sidechain for both the bus compressor and dynamic equalizer. Going further, selecting the external sidechain for one dynamic EQ band only. When you select the external sidechain input for the dynamic EQ, by default, it is used for both the LF and HF bands. However, you can choose to have one band driven from the external sidechain and the other from the internal sidechain. External SC input for LF and HF. Make sure DEQ is selected as the external sidechain source. Press and hold the SC HPF control and you'll see the LF and HF dynamic EQ activity LEDs flashing green, default state, both bands driven by the external sidechain input. External SC input for HF only. Whilst keeping the SC HPF control held down, press the LF control. This will return the LF band to being sourced from the internal sidechain, whilst the HF band remains triggered from the external sidechain input. The HF DEQ LED turns red to indicate this. External SC input for LF only. Alternatively, keep the SC HPF control held down, press the HF control. This will return the HF band to being sourced from the internal sidechain whilst the LF band remains triggered from the external sidechain input. The DEQ LED turns orange to indicate this. Page 14, Dynamic Equalizer DEQ. Many engineers use regular static equalization in addition to their master bus compression. Often often feeling that they need to compensate for the psychoacoustic perception of dulling that compression can bring. Also, in general, many engineers apply a static EQ across their mix as part of their mixing template to help achieve the level of bass and presence that modern productions require. A dynamic EQ, however, is a more intelligent form of EQ which changes the gain of an EQ band proportionally in response to a signal level once above a set threshold. Dynamic EQs allow you to modify the contrast between background material, under threshold, and forward material, above threshold. Whilst putting together the concept for the Bus Plus, we wanted to build in a dynamic EQ that could be applied either before or after compression. After a considerable amount of research and development, we came up with a design for the first ever SSL Dynamic EQ, the DEQ. The sidechain is a specially adapted version of the bus compressor sidechain with additional circuitry, such as the gain reduction limiter for the range parameter. We think the DEQ is every bit as musical and powerful as the bus compressor itself. Some people may think of dynamic EQ as a tool fulfilling a similar role to that of a multi-band compressor, 
without the crossover phasing issues caused by band splits of a multi-band design, which is definitely one way of looking at it. However, through exploring the power of the DEQ, we are certain you will find many more creative uses beyond this, particularly using the expansion to enhance source material. DEQ Controls The DEQ is a two-band LF and HF dynamic EQ with both engines able to be turned on or off, bypassed individually. The default frequency of the LF shelf is 60 Hz. The default frequency of the HF shelf is 6 kHz. When the HF shelf is changed to a bell using the HF bell switch, the default frequency is 4 kHz. All of these frequency points can be adjusted. See the DEQ frequency and range selection section. Band on or off. To turn an engine on or off, simply press the LF low frequency or HF high frequency control. It's easy to tell if the band is on as the corresponding DEQ switches, LF fast, HF fast, and HF bell will become backlit. Comp slash exp. Each band has a 31 position stepped control labeled with comp and exp at the extremes of the control. As you turn the control clockwise from the center position, zero, no effect, you start dialing in an expansion effect. Moving the control counterclockwise, you start dialing in a compression effect. By turning the control in either scenario, you are effectively lowering the threshold of the DEQ. Therefore, how far you need to turn it before either expansion or compression happens will be dependent on the signal level. DEQ Activity LEDs Above the LF and HF DEQ controls are tri-color LEDs, indicating how much dynamic EQ is being added or subtracted by fading between off, green, orange, and red colors. The green LED starts to come on with 0.5 decibels of activity, reaching full green color with 5 decibels. Full orange is recognizing 10 decibels of activity, whilst full red indicates 15 decibels of processing is occurring. Think of the activity LEDs as being the equivalent feedback you get from the meter for the bus compressor. DEQ switches. By default, the LF and HF bands are first order 6 decibels per octave shelving filters with nominal attack and release times set in the DEQ sidechain. However, the following switches allow for some different options. HF Bell Changes the filter type from shelf to bell for the HF band. Switching to this also changes the available frequency points providing the ability to apply EQ in the critical upper mid-range. See Frequency Points page for more information. Switch lights bright white to indicate HF Bell is active. HF Fast Change the time constants of the HF DEQ band to 1 millisecond attack, 50 milliseconds release. Switch lights bright white to indicate HF Fast is active. Nominal settings are 3 milliseconds attack, 50 milliseconds release. Pressing and holding the switch allows for a third auto setting to be chosen. Switch lights magenta to indicate this. Time constants for auto are 10 milliseconds attack, auto release. LF fast changes the time constants of the LF DEQ band to 10 milliseconds attack, 50 milliseconds release. Nominal settings are 30 milliseconds attack, 100 milliseconds release. Switch lights bright white to indicate LF fast is active. Pressing and holding the switch allows for a third auto setting to be chosen. Switch lights magenta to indicate this. Time constants for auto are 10 milliseconds attack, auto release. The LF gain control, left hand side of the unit, provides plus or minus 10 decibels of boost or cut to the low frequency band of the DEQ. This is control over the static band of the EQ. The LF gain can be used to apply a boost or cut of regular EQ 
to compensate for any dynamic EQ activity. For instance, you may use the dynamic part of the EQ to compress the lows, but add back in a bit of LF gain to compensate. The control is a 31 position stepped control. Think of LF or HF gain being the equivalent to the makeup gain control you have for the bus compressor. The LF HF gain control right hand side is the same as described for the LF gain, a static EQ control, but the mode of the bus plus determines whether it is a static gain for the LF or HF band. For classic stereo and delta sidechain stereo, the control acts on the HF band. This is indicated by the GHF LED being red. Please note, this is the only parameter on the right hand side of the unit that is active in either of the stereo modes. For dual mono or mid side modes, the control acts on the LF band. The color of the GHF LED may be either not lit or green in this mode, but is simply reflecting whether the G series mode is active or not. See next page. G series mode. Pushing the LF gain control will toggle G series mode on or off for the LF band. When active, the LED lights green. When the EQ is in G series mode, the filters are changed from first order to second order, 12 decibels per octave, and an amount of overshoot or undershoot is added to the shelving filters above the frequency cutoff point similar to that found on G-Series SSL EQs. This can provide a slightly different sonic character to the EQ, which we have found to be pleasant on sources like drum buses. Please note this is only available for the LF gain band, not the HF band, stereo modes only. And this shows a frequency chart of what happens when you engage the G-Series mode. DEQ frequency and range selection. For each band of the DEQ, 16 different frequency points can be chosen from, allowing control over which part of the frequency spectrum you want to affect. The DEQ also allows control over a parameter called range for each band. The range parameter allows you to restrict the maximum amount of expansion or compression possible by introducing gain reduction or expansion limiting on the control voltage for the VCA in the DEQ. Adjusting the frequency. Press and hold on the band, LF or HF, you want to change. The moving coil meters on the front panel will start pulsing and glowing. The left hand side meter is used to indicate the selected frequency. Pressing the HF fast switch will move the frequency point upwards whilst pressing the LF fast button will move it downwards. The left hand side meter needle shows the current setting. Press and hold the LF or HF control if you're adjusting that band or the mode switch to exit. Adjusting the range. Presuming you have already entered the setup mode by pressing and holding the LF or HF control. Pressing the HF fast switch will increase the range of the DEQ whilst pressing the LF fast button will decrease it. The right hand side meter needle shows the current range setting. Press and hold the LF or HF control if you're adjusting the band or the mode switch to exit. Frequency points. The illustrations below show you the frequency to which each needle position corresponds to. The default frequency of the LF shelf is 60 Hertz. The default frequency of the HF shelf is 6 kHz. The default of the HF bell is 4 kHz. The HF bell filter is a proportional Q design reaching a Q value of 1.87 at maximum boost or cut 10 decibels. The Q is 1.04 at 5 decibels. Range points. When setting the range parameter of the DEQ band, the right hand side meter displays the current setting. There are 25 different range values that can be chosen from. The minimum is a range of 0.5 decibels and the maximum is 15 decibels. 
between 0.5 and 8 decibels, the steps are in 0.5 dB, and between 8 and 15 decibels, the steps are in 1 dB. Usually, the markings already on the meter correspond directly to the equivalent range values. Page 20.